Here are the code writing examples for Nitro 5.8. Um, we start off with 5.8.7 with a class called Scope. So interesting, they have two different um, places in the code where it says start here. But so we have this class called Scope, which has A, B, and C. So when we create a new scope object, A, B, and C are initialized to be 5, 10, and 15. So over here, if we say something like scope, scope S, let's call it, equals new scope. And then we pass it no parameters. It's going to create a new scope object with these three variables initialized. Now, we have a print scope method. So print scope, they want us to print all of the variables that, that are in scope. So, literally something like this, system.out.println. And they want us, if we look at the formatting down here, they want us to print the name of the variable. So let's say a equals, and then the value of the variable, which in this case is a. And we want to do that actually a total of five times. So we're going to print out b equals whatever the value of b is, c equals whatever the value of c is. And notice that because all three of these variables, a, b, and c, are class level variables, we have access to all of those variables within any method in the scope class. So we have access to all of those. Now, there's two more variables down here that are not instance variables, but variables nonetheless that are in the scope class, but we don't have access to them except through these getter methods. So we can get a value for D and we can get a value for E, um, D being the sum of A and C and E being the sum of B and C. So these are both going to look similar up here where we're printing out uh, in the quotes, but I can't just print D and E like that. I have to say get D and then the double parentheses and get E and then the double parentheses. So that prints out every variable that we could possibly have access to within the scope class. And then over here in the main, since we created a new scope object, then we can use that scope object s and say s.print scope. And since s, since s is a member of the scope class, then it has access to all of the methods within the scope class, including this print scope right here. So this should run fine at this point, I believe. So the print scope method is going to print out all of the variables and their values, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, which looks like what we're supposed to do there. So I think that piece is okay. That will get graded by the teacher, not auto-graded by code HS. So then in 5.8.8, .8, which variables exist? So we have this math operations, and they've given us an example here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So math operations has one class level variable um, for pi and then a sum method which sums two numbers that are given to it and returns that sum 
And so they're giving us this example of all the variables that we have access to within this method. So within this method, we have access to pi, because that's a class level variable. And then we also have access to the variables called one and two, because those were the parameters that were passed to this method. So they want us to do something similar with all of the methods. So in the method called difference, we also have access to pi, the class level variable, and then we also have access to the variables called one and two because they were passed to us as parameters. So all of those are variables that we have access to. In the method called product, we have access to pi. We have access to, now the parameters they gave us are a and b. So we have access to a. So again, we're printing the name of the variable that we have access to and the value of that variable. But there's one extra one here. We also have access to a variable called result. On, on the sum and difference, they just returned the answer, in this case, the difference of one and two, they returned it without saving it as a new variable. But down here in the product method, they're saving the product in a new variable called result. So we also have access to a variable called result. So we're going to print that name and then print the value of that. And then something similar down here. Well, somewhat similar. So in the method called circle circumference, if you give us a radius as a parameter, then I know the value of radius. I have access to that. And still have access to pi. And there's no other variables within this method or that this method has access to. So we're done there. And then we have one extra one to do here. So again, there passing us a value of radius. So I know the value of radius. We already know pi because that's a class var level variable. But then we also have this variable right up here ca called area that is created within the method. So we obviously have access to that variable and its value. So I think for all of the methods, those are the variables we have access to. Let's see if this runs okay. All right, so that's looking pretty good for Nitro 5.8. And last but not least, 5.9. Broken calculator. So <clears throat> they've already created the entire calculator class. And in the main, they're creating a new calculator called MyTI and initializing it with five. So we would have to go over to the calculator class to see what that five is doing. And then we're printing out some stuff and asking the calculator we just created to add 10. Printing out some other stuff and asking the calculator we just created to multiply, or it says multiple, but I think it's supposed to be multiply two. And then changing the value to 20. So let's go over here to the calculator class and see what's going on. So the calculator class has two instance variables, total and value. And when we create a new calculator object, we are passing it a starting value and that starting value gets stored into this variable total, and then the value is zero. 
So that seems a little bit goofy to have a total and a value, but let's look at what this prints out for right now. And we've got a couple um, errors to deal with. So in the add method, they are they're initializing a variable called total. And I think we just want to use the, va the value of total that we already have as an instance variable. I think on both of these, so let's run that and see how that looks. Okay, one more total. We're adding together total plus value and storing that as total, but this is initializing a new variable called total. I don't think we want to do that initialization right there either. Okay, so now the code is running without error, but it's not running as expected. So again, we created a calculator with a starting value. I shouldn't say a starting value. A starting total. The parameter was called starting value, but that's stored in the total. So the other issue is I don't think we want this to be int either because if we make this int here, um, this is the reason why it should print 15, but it's only printing 10 because we're supposed to be starting with a value of 5. But that's not getting stored in this variable total. This is getting stored in a new variable total, which is being declared and initialized only within the constructor. So if we fix this one little part, so now our calculator will start with a total of 5. And then when we add 10, we add 10, it will add the 5 that it already has in total plus the 10 for the value, and then that'll make 15 now in the total. So that should fix the first little piece of the code. This part that says should print 15 will now be printing 15. The other thing is that this is, even though this works, this is really, really bad code writing. We should not be declaring a new variable called value when we already have an instance variable called value. I mean, it's working, but it's really bad practice because then it can be confusing now. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this, this unit, this lesson, but it can be confusing. What value does this refer to? Does this refer to this value or does this refer to this value? So, I mean, in this case, it refers to this value because this parameter called value has the more immediate scope. But it would be so much cleaner if we just did this. So to whatever total our calculator has, we're going to add the value of V that is passed to us as a parameter. So this will still work, but I think it looks much better. But their point of doing that was to get us to realize the difference between the value initialized as a parameter and value as an instance variable. So now we multiply by two. Let's look down here. And that's working correctly also, but on giving us an answer of 30. But again, I would like to clean that up a little bit. We want to multiply by this number, not by the instance variable uh, value. So the multiplying by 30 works fine. And then they're changing value to 20. They're changing this value to 20. But do they really? This again is very complicated because we have an instance variable called value. They have a parameter called value. And then this statement here says value equals value. Well, which value are you setting equal to which value? So this has the most immediate scope or the closest proximity scope. So when we're going to assign a value to this, 
and we're looking at this variable, that value is this value. And then, so that is 20, and that's going to get stored in this variable here, but this variable is also this variable. So we're storing 20 in a variable that already had 20 stored in it, and nowhere are we actually changing this instance variable called value. So again, to clean that up, if we call this V and call this V, now you give me a number in the parameter V, and I'm going to make that number, I'm going to store that number in our instance variable called value. And I think now this will work correct, and this will show 50 down here. So that's all working correct now. So there's a lot of different ways you could have fixed this. Um, sometimes instead of just doing initial, you can say the value or my value instead of just saying value. But it's really it just adds an extra level of confusion that we don't need by having a variable name as an instance variable and then repeating that variable name somewhere else. There's just unnecessary, unnecessarily complicating things. So anyways, it looks like the code there checks out and we are done with Nitro 5.8. Okay.